We're stoked to promote the fact that we're the largest surfing museum in the world. Uh, that's largely down to footprint, but also I think that what we're doing in terms of practices too, we're, we're looking to try and lead the world wherever we can, especially having been uh, accredited recently, uh, we have to measure up to national standards and that's a really important thing for us, but also in terms of international standing, I think that people can look at us and see that we're doing you know, the best possible job that we can. Uh, we don't own a lot of the material in here, uh, it's, it's either loaned or donated to, uh, to the museum, so uh, we don't have an acquisition budget, so we can't go out there and buy the things that we would like to have in here. We, re we rely on the generosity of um, the surfing community and people that have got um, valuable items in their, in their own um, collections. But it's a great place to bring all those things together, to put some context around them and, and put them on display so people can understand it's part of uh, an ongoing story, a, a really um, rich and fabulous tale. We're lucky to have um, two of the earliest surfboards in Victoria uh, here, which also connect surfing in this part of the world back to its Hawaiian heritage. My favourite surfer when I was growing up was a guy called Mark Richards, so we've got um, some material of his here in the museum, and uh, to me that resonates. Um, the first thrusters that Simon Anderson rode at Bells Beach, which has become the, the world standard for performance surfboards. So yeah, there's some, some pretty obvious things that we'd uh, we'd be looking at um, making sure that they're uh, taken care of pretty quickly. We have an on-site shaping room as part of the um, museum facility and it's a, it's a great thing because people can actually see a sculptor working on site here and it's become a bit of a black art that um, it used to be if you bought a surfboard you'd buy it from a shop that was out the front of a smelly factory that was full of resin fumes and dust and, and so now it's got to the point where people are removed from the experience of actually um, manufacturing the board. So, uh, it's a really cool thing for us to be able to um, have AG shaping boards on site here and for people to be actually seeing a board created because that's how it used to be for a long time. Sitting at the heart of the, the museum is the Australian Surfing Hall of Fame. Uh, that's a great opportunity to uh, single out some individuals that have made a conspicuous contribution to surfing over time and uh, celebrate their lives and their achievements. I think there's something inherently um, suited to Australians and surfing. It, it just seems to be such a, a, a cool link. I think most most Aussies, if they have leisure time, they head to, towards the beach, or during summer particularly, spend time at the beach. So it, it doesn't take a huge leap then to grab a board and, and head out there. And I, I guess it's part of our cultural identity.